Pink suits with hacks to match Big cracker dolls and Cadillacs You looking for the fatty sacks This is where it's at Windows tinted Seats for living crime Keep the hands on the burner Cause niggas know that it's money on the Yo, what up, though? It's your man, Jay Johnson, a.k.a. the Tim Foyo Hat Titan, a.k.a. the Conspiracy Realist, the Technology Snob, Steve Jobs Jr., Don't Text Me With Your Green Bubbles, a.k.a. Only Debate My Equals, Everybody Else I Teach. Uh, shit. Also known as also, Juice. <laughs> yeah, also known as Juice, because all the hoes say, Jay, you ice. <laughs> Young Caesar, so you know you can't roam without me. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. It's been a minute. We ain't do the we ain't do the intros last week. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We said we were, but releasing them, it, it they, didn't they didn't cut us off. Like we just didn't do the shit. Yeah. And it's your homeboy, Dame Gone Wild, aka the Pride of PA, High Chief Dame. Don't fuck around. The West Side Landlord, the liquor store legend, the corner store conquistador, the thought break kid, Dame Gone Wild. <laughs> what up? <laughs> I enjoy that one. <laughs> oh, the the thought break kid. Um, a, a, a slight ode to Shawn Michaels, yeah. who's still not a better wrestler than Ric Flair. Uh, we not getting into that <laughs> conversation <laughs> at all. Space Mountain, uh, oldest ride, longest line. Yeah, we not getting into that conversation. Uh, what up, though? Mm. Welcome back, Shop Talk Podcast, episode forty eight. Low key is forty nine, but y'all didn't hear one. Only fifteen of y'all heard <laughs> the one episode I pulled off last week. Um, Why'd you pull it down? Because of, cause of the joint episode? Well, no. So, we did two episodes last week. Right. And we was going to drop both of them in a week as a bonus because we appreciate the love and support. So, we had Fonzo and Vanessa in here, and we went over the single mother episode. And 48 minutes into the episode, something happened with the audio. And it would just stop like, eh, 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 eh. Damn. I didn't know. Like, because, you know, I, I listened and skimmed through to make sure everything sounded good. Like, I didn't go like an hour into it. So somebody reached out on Facebook was like, I think something's going on with the audio. Fuck. So I listened to it. I'm like, oh, shit. And then luckily, we had two episodes in the stash. So a few hours later, I put that one up. That's such a good episode, too. We're going to have to just get Fonz on Vanessa back yeah. up Well, here. I mean, we, we, we it's 48 minutes of it. like So we actually get, get into the crux of it. I mean, it's still a good episode. Yeah. But, you know, I, I might do. Fonz was my guy. Yeah, Fonzo And Vanessa's guy. good people, too. And Amazing momager. Shout out to the twins. They got their birthday party today. I'm going to slide through. How old are they turning? Five? Four. Four. Yeah. Four. Uh, maybe five. Four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah. four. Four. Okay. Yeah, four. Uh, if I'm wrong, uh, I'll get cussed out. You so. definitely will. So, man, uh, how was your week, man? Hey, man. Good week. Uh, I got some new ink. Got tatted up some okay. more. Uh, What'd you get? All this shit on my forearm. Oh, I just look. Oh, I ain't yeah, even, yeah. I mean, all that shit kind of blend in. I mean, that's 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 the purpose. I want it what, what more is this, to blend bro? in. Some doves, rosary. You know, I just don't want to see no more yellow. You know, a dove ain't nothing but a white pigeon. Oh, uh, that's okay. white privilege. Because they don't throw pigeons at funerals, <laughs> <laughs> but they throw doves. Hey, White doves. I, what what is that? It's a video that's been floating around for years. Yes. Like my man is at the, <laughs> is at the funeral. He throw up that dove, he and that bitch it. hit right back to the ground. <laughs> he was holding a little bit too tight. Yeah. Hey man, snap that little motherfucker's neck. Uh, what think up? about this though? Like really, a dove is a white pigeon. Nah. Why the white version is better? I don't know. I don't. I'm not even gonna walk down that line. Some like, else. Peep this though. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Nah. Have you ever seen a pigeon fly? Yeah, I, I've seen pigeons fly. Like you seen them? I go got people. From, I got people from New York. So I mean, I've seen like they fly. I seen them like glide from like st- from the stoop to the roof. No nah, like, man, not like I've seen them. I've seen them motherfuckers flap their wings and shit. Okay, I never seen a baby pigeon. Uh, how hard are you looking? I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> get it. Like <laughs> they don't <laughs> exist. <laughs> they just. They the just pop up <laughs> full grown. He's come out full grown. They all migrate from New York. I think all pigeons come from New York. Yeah. Um, they like pigeon. flying rats. No, nigga, I seen a rat last night. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, shit in Ferndale. They got dip, like I, I'm walking down the street and I heard the heard the bushes shake and then I'm like, what the fuck is that? I grab my gun. And I, cause like it's two o'clock in the morning and yeah. the bushes is making noise and then rats came out, broke the fuck out. Yeah, uh, mice is one thing, but a rat is a completely different motherfucking animal. Whew. Them bitches is big and they nasty and they vicious and I don't want no parts of that shit. 
I killed one in my front yard. Mm. Too close. Yeah, yeah. Last thing you want is that motherfucker in your house. Oh man, I had a pretty good week today. This week too, man. Um, I went to work. I, I ain't gonna say that. Uh. It was a pretty good week. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're leaving something out. Yeah, I did leave. I'm about to leave something out just in case somebody. Uh, somebody listen. from the job is listening. Yeah. Uh, pretty good week. We back up in here for this is our second episode recording inside of Shop Talk Podcast Studios. We official now. So if you need voiceover work, you got a podcast that you're trying to pop off all on the ground. You got an audio book. You just want to talk some shit on a mic. We can... We create can, a package for you to make that shit happen. You want to shoot a commercial? I got the green screen. We got 4K video. Um, I edited it up. You want to shoot a little? Uh, you want to be a lawyer? You know how them lawyers they, yeah. just, they literally just be standing in front of a green screen. Call Mike wins. Mike one eight hundred whatever whatever. Attorney Carl Collins because he, he is, is good. good That's my nigga. Out of the Greenfield? Nah, Carl Collins is in the Northwest Activity Center. Yeah, you know they record podcasts out of there too. Yeah. Anybody listening who records a podcast in the Northwest Activity Center, uh, if you don't want your executive producer all in the videos, <laughs> just holla at us. We out here. Yeah. All right, man. Um, we had a pretty interesting week this week in the social media realm. Okay. Yo, shout out to Bow Wow for taking the <laughs> most L's ever in a week. <laughs> the Bow Wow Challenge. Did you I see love the that Bow shit. Wow Challenge? That shit is, has given me... Giving me life all week long. I love to see niggas troll. First of all, Shad Moss, Bow Wow, however you want to refer to this motherfucker. It's not 05. The legend. No. Bow Wow, the legend. Come on, I'm not going that far. It's not It's not 05 no more. Bow Wow, niggas, not, Bow niggas, Bow wow not a legend. A legend in what? Like, I'm a grown man. I was never, like, I was grown when Bow Wow first came out, and I was never, like, Bow wow, in, the, in the thick of that shit. You five years older than Bow Wow. Which means I was a fucking adult when he first came out. He was like 13 and I was 18. No, that nigga was like 11. And I was 16. Like, I was still living like a grown, like is, a grown is, motherfucker. Is Bow Wow not a legend? No, I'm, no. I'm not even, no. Fuck no. You Fuck sure? no. Name, nah. a, name a legendary Bow Wow song. A I'm verse. Not, I'm not talking about a, a legend. legendary whoa, album. Whoa, whoa. I'm not talking about a legendary rapper. I'm talking about when you look at Bow Wow and encompasses everything, you're going to tell me Bow Wow not a legend? I will say it again. Bow Wow is not a fucking legend. Bow Wow's been in the game 20 plus years now. What, Doing uh, what? He's been in the game 20 years. He's st- still not making music. That doesn't count. Well, I'm, about to, I'm about to slander you Bow can't, Wow. Listen, you can't sell out. me on that shit. I'm about to slander Bow Wow in a minute. Right. But I will tell you why he a legend. Because he's been in the game for 20 years. Clearly, he got ma- major hits and major platinum records. Correct. Keep on. Bow Keep wow. going. I'm not. Bow Wow is in the movies. Correct. He 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 went from rapping. He did movies. He did television. He did hosting. Bow Wow has been linked to major bitches, major cold pieces. What major cold pieces? Esther Baxter, maybe. Bow Wow has been linked to major cold pieces. Please, please like name people them. who didn't. And they be like, "Damn, Bow Wow hit that first. Like in real life, just do Google, get quick Google search. Bow Wow. I'm not doing my Googles. Shit, on Bow wow. He just had the, the, his last fiance, Erica Mina. Don't She's not a major cold piece. Man, that bitch cold. <laughs> <laughs> What's your definition of cold? Cause uh, Listen. I'm not. I'm not saying she a slouch, anyway, but like I'm not gonna put her vagina on bucket list. Like I, didn't, I don't know what the vagina. Anyway, listen. Uh, major chicks. Mm-hmm. Like he's been linked to Sierra weak ass. I mean, she out here with Russell. Look, Sierra's a career killer. Everybody that she fucks with, their careers fizzle, except Future, the Lord and Savior of the trap. So you not smashing Sierra? Nah, I will pass. I will pass. No, thank you. You would pass based on her looks or based on like some emotional shit that uh, you about to get into. <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna get emotional about it. Like if I see a chick and she fuck with like whack niggas, I'm straight. I'm straight. You're not gonna group me with them motherfuckers. I don't want that blemish on my resume. I'm good. And she's not that cold. She doesn't she doesn't look that good. Like she's straight. I'm not gonna say like she's just a booger wolf, but like I'm straight. I'm not even reaching for Sierra. Then the nigga got a gig on CSI. 
Like the nigga been out here for twenty years making moves. I, now I refuse to put this nigga said, in legendary status. Refuse. Hey, I don't care what you say. Bah, Shad Moss, the legend. <laughs> now let's get to the slander. The only thing legendary is the Bow Wow challenge and how this nigga was lying on that plane using a stock photo. Did you see him on? So he did an interview with uh, Jesus and Mero. No, because uh, that was the day of before yeah. before that shit broke out. Okay. I'm talking about he did an interview with Hot 97 after that shit, and he asked him, and he tried to play it off like it was something for the TV show. He's like, it's going to make sense later. Trust me. Trust me. You got to watch the show. Nigga, you was fronting. And we you going to try to pawn it off so a month and a half from late, like no, you, I don't want to watch any TV show that involves a nigga named Bow Wow like I'm just not interested he's not a legend and he's further proof that Ohio's full of shit he from <laughs> I thought he was from Atlanta he's from Ohio Hey man, shout out to Paper Park, man. <laughs> Park my nigga. Park all, my nigga. That's all Dame with I, I don't, slander, you know, Park my guy, man. <laughs> and we're going to be down in Cleveland. I'm going to have to probably eat these words in about a month from now because Park was talking about, you know, taking us with a. What a beautiful women in Cleveland at all three of them are. And I bet you Bob Wall smashed 90% of the hottest chicks in Cleveland. It. <sighs> I mean that's like four girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I'm not I'm not impressed. <laughs> I done ran through four in a bad weekend. So oh, I mean that's that? that's four chicks. Good good job. So Bow Wow, uh let's for y'all who four, don't know. Like four cold Cleveland chicks is like a quarter of one cold Detroit chick. Hey man. I'm I, jumping out the deep end. <laughs> clearly. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not I'm not slandering any Ohioan women. Cause when we go down, there, I know we gonna go down there, and I'm gonna have to eat this shit. But fuck it, I'm gonna talk it till we get there. So for those who don't know, Bow Wow was going on a flight to New York. He posted a picture of a private jet on my way to New York press run. A few minutes later, somebody takes a picture of Bow Wow in the economy class seat. <laughs> Which is, hey, whatever. I'm not spending the money if I don't have to. But you can't front like you on a private jet and then somebody actually takes a picture of you posting that fake video while you in the middle of the, a crowded plane and shit. Like, you on spirit, fam. <laughs> like, so then he beca- then, then the Bow Wow Challenge happens where people post um, what they post and then what they really do in the shit. And it's, it was, I like that challenge. Hey, man, uh, Lil Romeo had one where he was like he was in Hawaii and was standing like behind a tree in like a random <laughs> office app, <laughs> like a random office vestibule or something. Uh, that's funny. It's been entertaining. Yeah. I mean, just the hashtag itself has brought me so much joy this week and additional L's to Bow Wow. Man, getting caught up on these phones is is, is bad. Hey, the <laughs> phone will get you killed. So, I don't know. if Did you see the, the video of oh, this Fab? This nigga Fab? Out here bold. Hey, when you famous, you got to... You can't just be dealing with any raggedy chick. I am... Even though I talk crazy, I'm not like a huge proponent of cheating. I'm not. And I know oh, I... Look at that camera right there. That camera I'm right not there. a huge proponent of cheating. I'm not. And even though I be talking crazy as fuck, like, Fab got a family at the crib, dog. Like, if you're going to cheat... You got to be, there's got to be a level of discretion to this shit. And you just can't cheat with any, do it, do it, with any raggedy ass bitch out in the do streets. Do it count as cheating if you didn't initiate it? What do you mean? Like, I didn't try and holler at her. She pursued me. Yeah. Cause like, so there's a video of Fab FaceTiming um, a, a young lady. And while she was FaceTiming him, it was another camera off to the side recording the FaceTime. So he had no idea. And she was just basically like, hey, I just want to suck your dick. Can I suck your dick? And he was like, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and he was like, yeah, like, is it good or some shit like that? And, you know, the conversation ensued. But, like, he out here bold because. Not knowing he being taped. Damn, fam. But, like, he did. He, she asked him. He was like, uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like that skit that you seen. Like, niggas can't turn down head. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I understand the position that he was in. Like, you know, it's hard to be like, no, I, I <laughs> no, thank you. But then it's like, well, how, how she get you? It, it, it's it's too it's too many loopholes. You gave her your number, or but shit she, like that's fucked up because it's public, right? Yeah. And the cheating, like you kind of alluded to on last week episode, with shout out to cocktails and convos. Yeah, they were they were amazing hopes. Definitely. 
um, but you alluded to, it's different when the cheating is private, but when it's public and the, there's public embarrassment that goes along with it. It's hard to come back from that. Yeah. Like, if you just cheat on your wife and y'all the only two people that know, you, her, the side chick, and the Lord, like, you might be able to work that out. You might be able to save your marriage. Now, it's going to take hard work. Right. But, like, once you cheat and then she tell her sisters, tell her homegirls, tell her mama, tell her brother and her daddy, like, nigga, you, you done. It's, it's, you bad out here. Though. Yeah. You you are because even if she do forgive you, like you get in the side eye for the rest of your life. Which is why in relationships, I never, I don't talk about my shit. Like if I'm having an issue, like I don't go to somebody like, man, look what this was you did, blah blah blah. Because once we get back to normal, they never gonna forget that. Yeah. Like, and it's and it's your people, so they gonna instantly take your side. You're on my shit. team, no matter what. Yeah, so. yeah. So I mean, this is it's just bad. But Fab was out here looking bold because number one, somehow he gave her. The, there was a number exchange, and he was involved. Could in that be shit. email exchange. Could have been Facetime off email. You That's your saving grace, fam. Like I gave her my email address, and she Facetime me. And I picked up, and I said it was cool to get my dick sucked <laughs> by a chick that wasn't my my home, wasn't my wife, wasn't my my main lady. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's all bad. When you famous like that, you just got to take extra precautions. Like don't face. I don't know what you do. Like, I thought FaceTime was rather, like, safe. Not, I mean, these these Android phones is affordable than a motherfucker. You can have one off to the side recording while you on FaceTime on your good Apple, you know, trying to, Damn, trying to set up an appointment. So, I mean. Like, in situations like, you can't even lie. The best, I don't want to give this piece of advice out, but this is for niggas out there cheating. The best thing I can tell you to do is. Is exchange messages through Snapchat. They'll disappear. In this particular situation, he just still got caught. And it's another phone oh, recording it. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't beat another like a third party taking pictures because people These say, hoes are getting innovative. People got if you got a if you got a um an iPad or some sort of tablet and a phone, like you communicating through, like people take pictures. Uh, Snapchat yeah, shit fuck. all the time. Yeah, you fucked. Like you got to speak in person, and after you give them a pat down, to make sure they ain't wearing a wire. Or just you know what? Don't just cheat. Be, just, just be faithful to don't your Don't cheat, wife, bro. Man. How about just that? don't cheat. When you got you got that much to lose, this woman been with you for all this time. You finally get you played. It it would appear that she got dragged and got played through all these years. Y'all finally get married on the low. Because yeah. y'all just started wearing rings one day, <laughs> so y'all finally get married on the low, and you got another scandal, man. That's just. I, I don't know her, but she she seems Look, so nice, man. A woman will only take so much before she fucking snap. I watch Snapped, and these bitches be going crazy. Hey, I just say this: love and hate are varying degrees of the same emotion. I'm always weary or weary of people who really, 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 really be in love, or you love me, you got all this love for me, because given the right situation or the right circumstance, all that love can switch to hate. So all this love, you all lovey dovey, all that shit can switch to hate in a in a in a heartbeat, because it's the same emotion. It's just one is on the west side, one's on the east side. The yeah. same emotion. And I learned at a very young age, playing with a woman's emotion is not the wave. I had a chick stab me. Jesus Christ! When I was like fifteen. So I mean. I was maybe fourteen or fifteen. What did you do to a kid to make them stab? She you? wasn't. She was a little bit older. It's my homeboy cousin. She was probably like sixteen, seventeen. So she was committing statutory rape and assault and battery. Uh, I didn't even didn't even smash. What the fuck? Didn't even smash. Why would she stab you? Because I lied. I like I bold face lied to her about some shit. Look, I've had women pull guns on me. Mm. Look. When we talk about like our worst date scenario, yeah, that's coming up. I had a chick lock me in her house. I, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go, go into, into it because I had two. Yeah, it, it was it was just terrible. Well, but she almost took my life for yeah. some for for just lying and cheating and just being See? a dirtbag ass nigga to her. Well, Dame, because I was fucking with her an, emotions. This not to be an intervention though. You got to stop being a dirtbag. Uh, I'm that's that's behind me. That 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 type clearly, of action is behind me. Once uh, attempted murder takes place, uh, you gotta stop. Yeah, she was going. She was going to get her brothers to kill me. That's I, I truly believe that in my heart. Mm. That if I hadn't escaped, and I tell ah, the whole story. Yeah, I mean, if I hadn't escaped yeah. out of her house, yeah, she you might have killed tell that story. I would. In fact, that was like that was like one of our first episodes. After the first episode, we was talking about that shit. It was like, yeah, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, and we never did. 
when I talk about my worst date, like she she is a part of the whole nucleus of that <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's interesting, dog. Um, yeah, man. Shout out to Fab man. and Emily. <laughs> That's tough. Uh, hopefully they get through it. I don't really care in real life. Hey, man, um, keep the black family together, Fab. Do what the fuck you got to do. Go. If you got to pull off a Kobe and go buy her a $4 million ring, like, keep your wife happy. Keep your marriage together, bro. Uh, like, it's nothing out here but bullshit. If you, like, being single you. is a mirage in the desert. It looks good. I, it looks like you got water all around you, but, nigga, you swimming through sand. Fam, I've been, I'm out here for the last six months or so. Yeah. It is a mirage. <laughs> it is. Like, that shit is not what it's cracked up to be. If you got you a good, like, I know I be talking that that bullshit about cheating, but let me say something. Ain't, there is nothing more valuable. There's not a more valuable investment that you can make besides having a good woman. A good Absolutely. woman will take you from good to great. Absolutely. She will mold your life, how you saving money, how you eating better, nigga losing weight. Nigga, come home. She be having shit laid out for you. Be dressing better, smelling better. Like invest in a good woman. I, I agree. I have no no qualms about that at all. Cause you can't boss up with a weak bitch in your life. You can't. And you can quote me on that shit. Ring the motherfucking bell. You can't boss <laughs> you up with a weak them. bitch in your life. Absolutely. Oh. Uh, uh, all right. So staying on that whole social media realm, um, something happened this week where a big story came across that half of a uh, Shea Butter Twitter posted. Shea Butter Twitter. <laughs> Half of uh, my son is my king Twitter uh, posted a, a, a picture in, of a young lady with a black eye. and it wasn't just a black eye. She got beat the fuck up. Or, the, or a picture of a woman real bit battered and bruised saying that she met a date on Instagram and this is what happened to her. And the, the pitfalls of social media and dating and just men being evil and you know all that 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 comes with it or whatever right mm -hmm. and then i see another picture with a direct message and i'm like i heard you hit the nigga in the bed while he was asleep with a bottle hell yeah the nigga didn't pay me my money the fuck i look like so apparently this bitch is a, a instagram thought prostitute he didn't pay her the money and she attacked him while it, with a with a glass bottle uh, in his sleep, and he beat the shit out this bitch. All well is in well. Yeah, I was a little like, damn, my man fucked her up. But when I heard the whole story, number one, if you paying, if it's just a cash exchange for sex, there should be no stay in the night. I you don't. I forget what movie it is where it says you don't pay a prostitute for sex, you pay her to leave. Yeah. And after the sex was engaged, you should have gave her a forty dollars and let her get the fuck on about it here or whatever was the agreed upon amount. I don't know what the price of vagina is going for these days. And I don't even know the situation. And one niggas probably was on drugs because that's what y'all weird kids do. Y'all drink lean and sip all this shit. Oh, y'all sip all these fucking diners and then you have sex with a strange woman in your in your in your room. I mean, I'm down. You, for, I, I always I am a proponent of sex with a stranger. Uh, not while I'm, my body is fucking unconscious, essentially. Because okay. that's how you get uh, robbed and, and killed. And let me say or something. When, smacked in the face. When you body. speak about like lean Percocets, y'all are the new crackheads. For real. Like, I know niggas would like to make jokes about crackheads, but like, look up 10 years from now and all y'all. Not even 10. Y'all Zanny babies. Niggas been dying from this shit all the time, currently. Yeah, y'all y'all are the new age crackheads. Y'all are the Walking Dead for real. Let me drink this shit to slow down my heart right quick <laughs> <laughs> like, and make what? my arteries turn into cement. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna slow down my heart because that shit make me feel good. Okay, fam, keep yeah. going. Them shits is for, gonna fucking kill you, nigga. How many times you seen Future High? Because the nigga sober as fuck every time I see the nigga. Dog. This nigga's not doing these drugs, dog. He's not doing the drugs in front. I of do us. not think he is doing. And I've listened to a conversation with rappers. They were like, nigga, every time I see the nigga, he's sober. Like, this nigga is perpetrating a fraud on you niggas. No. Percocet. <laughs> Molly Percocet. That nigga nigga is sober not, as fuck. That nigga not doing it. He's smoking weed, probably. This nigga is not doing the drugs, I don't think. Ain't nothing uh, bad about weed. You're not going to turn into a zombie smoking weed. It depends on. So I, so there's weed that makes you hype, and then there's weeds that get you down. So sativa and. Ithaca. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, man, i tell you this. This shit is way too confusing nowadays, dog. Look, man, just get your card. Cool Breeze can help you get your card. Go to the dispensary. No, nah, man, because this shit not normal. Y'all motherfuckers didn't put this shit in the get lab. Get you some Gorilla Glue. Y'all didn't, didn't, didn't took 
seeds from this plant, seed from this plant, and then made new wheat. Like that shit not natural, fam. It is natural. You still putting a a, a fucking seed in the dirt and watching it grow. Nigga, I can take a, a a a cat and a pig and make them bitches. They both came from nature. You can't make a fucking cat and a pig, but you can. S- ma- says who? Look, man, I'm not even. <laughs> I'm not even walking down that <laughs> one with you. <laughs> Why the fuck would you want to make a cat and a pig? Why the fuck is I want to go you, there? You <laughs> you want to look? You just want to get high. You just want to get high. Just get you a good. I can recommend a few good strains, and man, just uh, enjoy your day. Um, y'all niggas and took you want to spice up your next date? Kill a fifth of hen in the car and smoke two Kush blunts and see what type of excitement you all can get into. My days be popping. No, 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 no extra spice needed. Okay. Well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't feel no type of way after I heard that she smacked this nigga up while he was sleeping. Like, a, if you what s- a bottle. So you ever been woke up in your sleep by your lady? Yes. Okay. And it's an unpleasant fucking experience because very, very much so. She she's usually hot and ready, and you are like, "What the fuck is going on?" I don't like to be unprepared for situations, and like if I'm woke, if I wake up in the middle of the night and you standing above me with all your facts ready, <laughs> <laughs> you got a clipboard of shit. Like I'm like, uh, so your phone went off, and I just put your thumb up to it, and I happened to open <laughs> it, and I saw some things I want to discuss with you. That's why you gotta use an odd finger to, as your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As your touch ID, <laughs> you gotta use like your. No, nah, I mean we gotta go back to the back to the theme. You just can't be out here fucking around. But listen, but but you, even you if you're can, not you fucking, around, fucking yeah. around, you look at something and you don't know the the complexity of that shit. Everything is about context. So if you look at a, I tell you this situation that happened with me one time. Okay. And uh, I understand how it looked. I 100 percent understand how this looked. So I went out of town with a young lady. We went to. Uh, Atlanta, right? Having a good time and shit. Now, a few nights before this, two things happened. Uh, one of my one of my best female friends had came over one night. It's getting late. She slept over the night. Literally slept on the couch. I slept in my room. Like no funny you. business. Yeah, blah yeah. blah blah. Uh, and it started raining. That's what happened. It started raining, thunderstorming or whatever. It was late. I'm like, nigga, just sleep on the couch, whatever. So the next morning, I'm like, hey. Thanks for letting me sleep over last night, blah, blah, blah. Innocent. Boom, right? Later on that day. It's not innocent when you have a girlfriend. Look, like, they don't. <laughs> Later on that day, I went to uh, uh, one of my lady friends or home or whatever. Uh, I went to a graduation for, like, her son, like, from kindergarten or some shit like that, right? Mm. And it was, like, on uh, OU campus or Oakland University. I mean, um, OCC campus. Okay. So I text her, like, what's the room number? Uh, <laughs> and then the response like is room 503 then i'm like all right i'll be up there in a second or whatever okay so look <laughs> so i'm in atlanta and everything is going good and the, the young lady was like let me see your phone so i give her the phone because like we about to go somewhere and we be gpsing the whole time this was before iphones I why are you like going a- through my fucking phone I thought she was getting the directions. Yeah. So we had the trio at the time. That's what we used to drive down there. I mean, that's how we used to get around or whatever. I got you. So I gave her the phone, right? And I'm ironing my clothes. In about four minutes, I just looked up and said, give my phone back. <laughs> like, you had it too long. And then she had attitude, blah, blah, blah. So she looked in there, seen the text message saying, thanks for letting me spend the night. And then seen the text message saying, what room number you in? Me getting the room number and saying, I'm going to be up there. Like, so I'm trying to explain what happened. I'm 100% telling the 100% guy honest truth, and I feel like I'm lying my ass off because I know how it sounds and I know how it looked. But when you're looking through other people's shit and you don't have the proper context with it, it's easy to get your fucking yeah, heart Yeah, yeah, it is. So that's why you shouldn't go through other people's shit. I done got my heart like a younger me has definitely looked through a phone or two in my life. And nigga is like a punch to the motherfucking face, nigga, like for real. Like don't do it, don't. Like, do, and my my rule is now, like if I got to, like I just err on the side of caution. Like if I trust my gut, in in every facet of life. Like mm-hmm. if I feel you on some fuck shit, like I just I take my chance. Is. Yeah, and I take my chances and just be out. I mean, I, at some point, I think we all went through the point where you trying to go through phones and doing all this other bullshit. You'll break your motherfucking heart going through phones, emails. Text, motherfucking 
picture logs. Like you will break your own fucking heart. Just I mean, don't do this shit. I don't need no proof. I don't need to know if you doing this or doing that. If in my heart of hearts, I feel that we ever in a position like, hey, I don't trust this bitch. It's over with. I yeah. don't need no proof. Why this happened? I don't, I don't trust you. So moral of the story is, man, don't go through people's phones without the proper context. Cause Just don't go through nobody's phone at all. We all adults. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even like you should just be entitled to a certain amount of respect a certain amount as of, a fucking adult. And as an adult and as a person, your own person, you should actually be able to keep a certain amount of privacy to yourself. Not because you're doing anything, but you just need that sometimes. Yeah. I need some things of my own. So, Yeah. Uh, so don't don't go through my fucking phone, right? Uh, <laughs> and don't bust niggas upside the head with bottles in the middle of the night and be mad when a motherfucker wake up and beat you like you fucking stole something because you did steal them shit. So what else we got, man? Because uh, we had we were talking online or there was we was on Twitter. And that tweet went out about what's your worst date yeah. experience, and yeah, so I responded. You definitely respond because like I don't have a worst date experience, right? You've never had a bad date. Uh, nothing really fucked up has happened. I mean, I didn't have shit like it just wasn't fun, or like I'm, 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 I'm like she dip. just wasn't, yeah. But um, I, 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 I don't have like a, a grand story. I guess the story from last a couple weeks ago when, but that wasn't a date. Nah, that was, and that wasn't that bad. It's just old boy popped up. But yeah, I don't I've have had, a fucked up story. I've had some terrible dating experiences. All right, uh, this one that I that I responded to though in the tweet. So let me read the tweet because <laughs> I mean read the. I'm like what? So you said my date got drunk as hell, tried to hop on my back as we left the restaurant, but fell, hit her mouth, and lost four teeth. Four adult teeth, nigga. I need details. Okay, <laughs> so. Even how I met this young lady, let me let me just paint the full picture. There was a point in time where I was like dating this woman that I thought I was in love with, thought I was gonna marry, you know, we was gonna blend families. But you know how shit be back and forth and we had like a little break. So now I'm back at now I'm back out here trying to just occupy my time and shit. Okay. And I can't even front. Like during the period I was a little heartbroken because she was like somebody that Shit happens. Yeah, like she meant something to me. So I'm out here back dating. I met this. Now, I was on a date with somebody else, and I was at the casino. Not not one of the casinos that I can no longer get into because of <laughs> what happened on previous episodes. But I was at the casino, and my date went up to use the bathroom. And I'm just sitting there thumb-fucking on my phone, and I kind of feel like somebody slide into the booth. So I'm thinking she coming back. It's a completely different woman. Mm. And she was like, look, I've been watching you since you got here. Whoop whoop! I think you're handsome. Maybe you should give me a call. What? And slid me her business card, and then dip right the fuck on off. Only this type of shit only happens in Dame's life. It, hey man, I got my life is full of colorful shit. Yeah. So and she was gone. My date made it back from the bathroom. We continuing on like nothing happened. Old girl that slipped me the number. Her and her girls in there eating like, and she just played cool. Mm-hmm. So I hit her up because you know. Dame is a savage. <laughs> so I hit her up like, what's good? Conversation was good. We, we, you know, we we had hung out a few different times, like play pool, you know, just met up for drinks. And I usually, like, try and get, like, two or three of those in to kind of fill somebody out before, like, I'd be like, hey, can I take you out? Like, you know, I just want to kind of fill out somebody's personality. True. But once she interrupts a date that you're on. She didn't interrupt because my date was gone. She was in the bathroom. What I'm saying is, it was like, open season. Once you know that you're on a date and you jump in, like we don't the the warm up period is pretty much over. Like you already know what time it is. Yeah, because like clearly you don't you don't think much of a. I'm not much of a person if you think I'm about to go out with you while I'm on a date. Like so, like I don't need to take you on three dates because like you. No, no, we didn't go. Time. Like we just hung out like a yeah. few. Times. Like I met her up. Uh, shout out to the East Side uh, at the Golden Greek. At the motherfucking uh, quickie bar, you Never know, heard of it. it's it's some e- it's some know. East Side haunts. Nigga, you can tell me the uh, East Side name of a street, unless that street runs to the West Side as well. Never heard of it. And and a woman at the time I was dating was from the East Side, so I know, like, I know the ins and outs of the East. 
Better than probably the average West Side nigga. Okay. Because the East Side is a whole nother motherfucking it's country. A it's a different city. It's a different set of rules that apply over there. But shout out to my to my East Side homies and my East Side barber, East Side Nate, who took delicious to prom. He always wants me to mention that. Like it, it comes together. How great was his prom? Prom it, night. Uh, I ain't even gonna. Uh, I ain't even gonna I'm tell not, a lie on that woman. Good, I ain't because I would. Question. I would don't, love don't, to don't, get. Don't answer that. That's I would love to get her in this room and ask her so many other different things. But yeah. no matter. So now me and old girl decided we're going to go out on a date. Now, we started drinking at her house, you know, just just threw a few shots back, you know, Mm -hmm. just to kind of loosen up the night. And we decided, all right, we're going to go out and eat dinner now. Now, while we went to uh, fucking Logan's, (laughs) we went to Logan's and had dinner and shit. And I mean, shout out to them fucking bread, the bread at Logan's. Yeah, the bread is good as fuck. And they let you throw them peanuts on the floor. Yeah. My kids love that shit. Just being able to throw shit on the floor. Slight side note. Uh, one time, my family went and we took my grandma there too. Right. This sounds terrible already. Uh, she walked in, was like, "This place is nasty. Why am I got all this stuff on the floor?" Like she started going in, like grandma, like you supposed to throw them on the floor. Like no, nah, I don't. She I don't, don't want to eat there. I don't like this place. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better take her gra- somewhere else. That's not an old school grandma place. Nah, now you forty five year old grandmas. That may be y'all, but forty year old grandmas. Forty year olds. But, but yeah. anyway, so we having a good time eating, you know, steak and shit. Even throwing some more drinks back. Now at this point, we're both pretty fucked up, but she's like probably three drinks past me fucked up because she was drinking before I came over to her house. So she already had like a light buzz mm-hmm. then, but now she like drunk. So and it's snowing outside. Let me mm. let me put that little piece of it in there too. It's snowing like fuck outside. So the date's over. We ended up shutting Logan's down. Like we were like the last ones to leave up out of there, and we were gonna go back to her place. Now she lived across the street from St. John's Hospital on Maross, which is a very important part to this story. <laughs> so we decided, like you know what, let's take let's take it back to the house. Like we know what time it is. We both drunk. You know, you interrupted my date, so clearly you hot and ready, and, you know, I'm always typically, you know, for some action. So we decide to leave. So on the way out, now she's wearing, she's dressed beautifully, wearing heels and shit, and she decides, I want you to carry me to the car. <laughs> and I'm just like, nah, baby, we're not going to play them type of games because I'm not carrying you to the car. No way. Nah, I want you to carry me to the car. She drunk. So she jumps on my back. Now, I was holding the carry out and shit. So she jumps on my back. We both fall. But she falls over my back. Now you know like wow. when now you know like when when you see like in in uh parking garages or parking spaces, like the little island where like the trees would be planted in and it's just like its own little yeah. circular island to herself. That's what we walking past at this point. So she jumps on my back. We both fall. She falls mm. over my back with her mouth wide open oh. and hits this motherfucking concrete. Oh, man. Oh, and then she starts, man. like, screaming. I'm like. It's one of them. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> she starts screaming shit. and shit. She turns. I, get, I stand up. She turns over. All I see is blood rushing down her mouth. Her face. She opened up her mouth, and the first thing I can see is her first four teeth oh, are completely gone. Shit! <laughs> uh, I've probably been like, Ew. so the people from Logan's they they was locking up, so they saw what happened. So one of like uh, the hostesses is rushed out, like, "Are you guys okay?" I'm like, "Look, I need a cup," because I remember being back in some milk. <laughs> yeah. Well, they ain't had no milk, but I at least need a cup to put these teeth in because I'm not carrying them shits. Jesus Christ. So now we looking for her teeth in the fucking snow because it's it's still fucking coming down outside. She's bleeding profusely from the mouth. And you sobered up quick to the motherfucker. Yeah, because now I'm like, fuck, we'll, we, we got to go to emergency. Clearly. So... She stayed right across the street from St. John, so I figured let's go back to the... We're not too far from her house anyway. We was like at Macomb Mall and shit. So we drive back. I got like an extra t-shirt or something in the car. I think I went shopping and had like some Foot Locker tees in the car. So you, can't, I, you can't have my fresh white tee for I, your... I gave her... Fresh faux tee for me. I, I gave her her white... I gave her a white tee. So she's bleeding... Profu- she's still bleeding profusely. Like, this shit is not stopping. Mm. We make it to emergency. I park the car or whatever. So now we're in emergency and shit. 
Now they're trying to talk to her separately because they want to be sure that I didn't punch this bitch in the face. Gotcha. And that's the reason why, yeah. like, she's bleeding from them. Excuse me, sir, could you could you step outside? For, and I'm telling them, like, she's told them the story. I've told them the story. Like, well, I didn't we, hit we you. We see this all the time, sir. Exactly. That's yeah. that's how they talking to me. Yeah. I'm covered mm-hmm. in blood. Yeah. So, so now they, <laughs> <laughs> so they talking. Like, the, the the hospital police came up there and and. Had a conversation. Are you with okay, her. ma'am? Yeah. Do, do you need me to sit, ma'am? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. One of them conference people are looking at me like I'm a scumbag because clearly I've beat her, and that's why we're here at the hospital. At this particular point, uh, I might just cut my losses and dip because I don't need this judgment, and okay. I don't. I don't even know you, stranger. So, so this, <laughs> so that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and a few things came to factor into that. Number one, we're never going out again. Never. Number two, you're literally right across the street from your house. All right. So, I mean, when they let you out, Go all you got to do is just cross over Moross, and you're right at your house. Whew. And, like, what's the purpose? Like, I stayed there with her probably to about, like, 3 in the morning. But, I mean, at this point, emergency is really only stopping the bleeding. They can't do shit about these faux teeth in this no. cup. Mm-mm. So, she had to go to the doctor the next day. So, she got this gut. This gauze and all this shit in her mouth. And she told me, so you don't want to see me again, do you? I'm like, let's let's just concentrate on what's going on right now. She ended up having a concussion, lost four motherfucking teeth. I ran into her about a year ago, and she had dentures. And she sho- oh. She took the dentures out and showed me, like, the teeth are gone. Oh, the geez. teeth are, are inside of these dentures. And when you a fucking adult, like, them bitches ain't growing back. No, so you gotta get you gotta get some fake teeth. Yeah, like inserted though. I'm not doing the denture shit. Well, she had dentures. I don't know how much fake teeth cost, but maybe her insurance didn't cover that shit. I'm paying it. I don't give a fuck what it costs. I'm not. My teeth is way too important for to me. No, sorry. Yeah, but you know she got a mouth full. Of, she got four fake teeth veneers. in her mouth. You know what I'm saying? Get some veneers. You know they they like look like the Mister Ed joints. All these niggas got veneers and shit, dog. dog. So. Uh, shout out to you with your mouth full of your your loose ass teeth. I mean, at that point, she might as well just got a grill. Oh man, take it back to the old school. Get a Wu Tang, uh, <laughs> the Wu Tang grill and shit. Nah, man, she she was a very attractive woman. Uh, if you know, it's the word you used. Was <laughs> <laughs> she was a very attractive woman. I mean, she still looked good when I saw her, but I know your secret that mm-hmm. you ain't got full front teeth. But that could. Maybe for the next dude, that could be a good thing. We never got to that point. Yeah. Uh, she had a wedding ring on, so I'm sure somebody has taken advantage of her not having four teeth, four teeth in the front. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, it's a good passageway. It's, <laughs> it's a good spot to have none teeth if you about that life. So. Yeah, but that was probably one of my worst date experiences. Man, I, I, I don't have anything to top that. I story don't, time with Uncle Dame. Yeah, story time with Dame, for sure. Uh, that's amazing. That's fucked up. That's a that's a fear of mine, actually. To have some shit like that happen? Like, I, I had that shit happen uh, uh, slightly when I was younger. I did fall off my bike, like, over the front. Yeah. Um, And I, I chipped my tooth. It's a, it's a real tiny chip. It's still chipped right now. Most of you really can't see it, but there's a chip there. And, like, that was after I had got braces and shit. And I'm gonna talk oh, about man. It. My mom was for years, dog. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> like I came in the house and told you I, I hit my tooth and like Hey man after braces I don't want to hear shit about your mouth Right. Like yo my oldest is walking around right now With a fucking used car in his mouth Like a good used car For sure Like nigga I could have got you t- like a Yukon With what you got in your mouth right I had now. braces like 8th grade I got them off like right before ninth grade Right before ninth grade started I got my braces off or whatever So motherfuckers used to talk shit about me having braces in middle school Because middle school can be cruel You know what I'm saying Yeah kid I'm like, bitch, these braces cost more than your mama car. Like, fam, uh, that was my only comeback. Like, you know how much this shit costs? Okay. A lot. Uh, and yeah, I, but I don't want to hear shit from my, yo, dental work is so motherfucking expensive. I don't want to hear shit about no teeth after you done fucking had on braces. I think the name of this episode is going to call be called Who Needs Who Needs Teeth? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how important are teeth anyway? Nigga, hella important. That shit changes your whole dynamic. No, that's the name of the episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How important are those teeth anyway? Hell yeah. Uh, what else did we have to touch on? Because I know that wasn't it. No. Oh, uh, Nessa's uh, question of the day. 
Yeah, Vanessa had a question of the day, and it said, "Shout out to the Cohen brand for real." And I watched you on TV. I did too. I recorded it uh, live in the D. Yeah, we got to we got to support because she's family and she'll be at the Shop Talk picnic. We're gonna talk. About, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that at the end of the episode. All right. So Vanessa had a question: If you've been in a relationship for years, everything's good, everything's going good, but you want to get married and the other person doesn't, is that a deal breaker? If they don't want to be married, but they still want to be with you, is that a deal breaker? Are we talking? And this, I'll let you go first. Uh, and it didn't say man or woman; it just said person. So it does. It doesn't specify if it's the man that doesn't want to get married or if it's the woman that doesn't get married. We're just talking about in general. If the person that you've been with, and via the question, it states everything is going well. There's no problems. There's no infidelity. There's nothing like that. We just happy shacking up. Yeah. Uh, is that a deal breaker if they want to be married, you don't, or vice versa, but they still want to be with you? No, nah, for me at this point in my life, that's just not a deal breaker, but I know better than that. Like, What you mean? That, like the woman that I'm, that I'm currently, you know, dealing with, I know she wants to be married. So, I mean, I know that's not going to be like, that's not going to come up for us. But if I was with a woman and she didn't want to be married, that's cool. Like we, I've been married once already. Like I've tried it; it was cool. I would like to get married again. Like I, I've said, I think I've said that before. Like I want to get married again. Uh, but if she, we're just living together, shit going good. Like why break a good thing? Like if you happy, I'm happy. So I was just looking at the the comments on this, and everybody deal breaker. No, no marriage. You shouldn't date unless you want to get married. And I, I, I agree. I think um, that's coming from women that. Haven't been married and probably will never be married. And these were all coming from women, and then some of the guys like, no deal breaker, deal breaker, whatever. You know, why is it a deal breaker? We happy. So then my question was, what is your goal out of marriage? Like, do you literally want the actual wedding? Or yeah, because there's a difference between a wedding and a fucking marriage. Yeah, like, the marriage happens after the wedding. Yeah. So do you want a person that you want to be with for the rest of your life, the love, the companionship, the commitment, everything like that? If you've been in this relationship successfully for years and you literally have that already, like after you get to the quote unquote marriage, if the point of the marriage is supposed to be all of that, right? Yeah. The love, commitment, honesty, all that, those intangibles or whatever. If you actually have that already, you have what you want. Like uh, besides that, the next step is a contract with the state of Michigan to, to figure out what happens financially if me and you go our separate ways. But if that never like literally, if that's what you want and you've already had it, why would it be a deal breaker for you? Unless subconsciously you think that this person don't really want you. Uh, I think some people get caught up with with what we what you were saying, just like the wet itself. Excuse me. Or like they they want the white dress, they want some shit to take pictures of and show off to their friends. Look, I get married down at the courthouse on Monday. Uh, and have a cabaret, let Cool Breeze DJ the shit, let it be BYOB. You know, one thing I do want on my wedding, I, I take that back because if I get married again, I want my wedding invites to look like an old No Limit cover mix like album. Did you see that? Yeah. Like, I want I want my shit like to look like that. Like somebody sent me one of those. And then I want like an airbrush background like he used to have back at the club. That's where I want everybody to take their pictures in front of. <laughs> and then when we move into the house, I'm going to put it in the basement. So when niggas come over, they can take a picture in front of my Mercedes Benz backdrop. I mean, at, at this point in my life, I've been to a lot of weddings, right? And I've seen them all. From the upscale to the classy to the, you know what I'm saying, just cool to the hood weddings to that we didn't have a lot of money and somebody made the macaroni and cheese and put it in one of them big silver things or whatever. Somebody and made that this mac spaghetti. and cheese is good as fuck. Yeah. And what I found out is if it's true love in that bitch, I'd have had the, some of the most fun in church basements, <laughs> you Hell know, yeah. that type of way. Like I've had the most fun and the, the love and atmosphere and everything. It don't, I be, Sometimes people get caught up in the words when I say all that extra shit don't matter. It really matters about the feelings or whatnot. What you pay for this venue is not does not mean that your your love is more or right. less or that your marriage just because is you work. put on for a bunch of motherfuckers doesn't mean that your marriage is gonna last. 
I mean, you can have a big grand ass wedding and y'all be mad as fuck. Nigga be miserable. Yeah. Nigga cheating on you a week later. But if you are you are actively inside of a relationship and everything is going fine and you don't see an end to this, because this the thing is, if marriage was permanent, I could understand it. The the it's a deal breaker. But marriage not permanent. Hell no. You can get out of a marriage quick as fuck. So when you saying no, I need a, I need the ring so I know you sit. Nigga, a marriage can be ended with two hundred fifty dollars. Nigga, my divorce costs less than the whole wedding ceremony for real. So, like, I understand it. I do want to be married in the whole nine yards, but, but like, if I'm in a situation and, like, if I literally have what I'm already looking for, like, why would you fuck that up? Because what it looks like to other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've been, Jason and Serena been together for 15 years and he ain't never married that girl. You know, it's just, it's just like what, what it looks but like. Guess to what people. I did for the last 15 years? I came home every day. I put a roof over your head. I gave you honor. I gave respect. I didn't cheat. I didn't dip out. We, you know, we we ensure we in, we shared life moments together. That's what I've done for 15 years because I didn't throw a party and invite all you motherfuckers who really don't care about my day to day life. Now I'm supposed to be a eight shit person. And now I'm not gonna recoup none of this money from this <laughs> wedding. You gotta invite white people to your wedding to you recoup gotta, money. You gotta go. To, you gotta have a church home. In order <laughs> Hell to, yeah! Like if you don't. That's go what it's important. <laughs> like to be a life, member of perfected. Like if you don't have an actual church home, your wedding and you're not cashing. No, no, and you gotta be like a little bit active like you got to be on the armor bearer staff you got to usher do the children's message because like if they don't know you and don't fuck with you they're not coming out yeah. and if month like yeah, niggas are come dick. out to your wedding and eat and dance and drink your open fucking ca- drink your open bar your cat first let me let me just say this because i have a very strong feeling about this if you have a wedding and you have a fucking cash bar i'm taking my gift back with me that bar better be fucking open and i better be able to get drunk for free Okay. <laughs> Don't invite me to your wedding and it's a cash bar. Okay. And it better be top shelf. So what the wedding in the basement of the church? Uh can we <laughs> Jesus turned water into wine. I can turn <laughs> some red cups and a little bit of hen rock into a good time. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, the the pa- you know, you slide an extra hundred to the pastor, you know, bye. <laughs> let's let's keep this bitch going. That's funny, dog. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot worse shit going on in the church than me drinking in the basement or in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely drunk in the church parking lot after I've weddings. S- I've smoked in the church parking oh, lot. So I, I mean, don't don't judge me. Don't judge me. The Lord know my heart. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it very well. Um, I just want to give a, a, a big shout out to Lavar Ball again this week. Because uh, they still talking about him a, a full week later They still talking about him uh, I sent you a video When he was on um, He don't need no advice From Kobe Well yeah he And everything he says Is 100% true uh, Like literally Everything he says Is 100% true Well 95% of it is true Some of it is be conjecture And I'm just like uh, Promoting But most of the stuff He says is true And I'm upset With All the People Who are mad are literally mad that he had the audacity to make a four four hundred ninety five dollars shoe when uh, Mason Margella can drop a four a, a twelve hundred and ninety five dollars or four that ain't that ain't shit but a cut up Air Force One with some paint on it and it's perfectly fine with you like you got to have some real like you may not even understand the reason that you're angry but you got to have some sort of self hatred if you literally are upset and offended that this black man can charge what he wants for a shoe and you will. Purposely, so this is the, the look. My young homie went to prom last week, and this nigga rocked some fourteen hundred fucking dollar Balenciagas with his suit to prom that he'll probably only wear like once or twice for a three hour event. He he wore these fourteen hundred dollar shoes, and his mom cashed out on a fucking uh on a fucking flying spur for this nigga to drive down to prom. Cause unfortunately, and I'm not, and I'm not shitting on him. Shout out to my my homie Young Turk, cause you was looking, you was looking fly that night. But all I'm saying is, you know, this is a black man trying to start, a, who has started his own business, started his ownership. own brand. Yeah, there's, cause they God made, bless the child that's got his own. They made fun of him because Nike and Under Armour and Adidas wouldn't mess with him because he said, I don't want a regular deal. I want to go into a partnership. You can partner with the big baller brand, and we can put shoes out. 
and it'll be like a joint venture. Like I'm gonna sign myself to my label, and then I'll do a, a distribution yeah. deal with such and such. There's nothing wrong with ownership. I'm trying to change the game, but my folks are literally mad at me and mocking me and making fun of me because I'm trying to start and establish ownership. Like I I don't get it. I don't but have no problems with Levar Ball. The major Ball. issue is. Well, his flip flops cost two hundred twenty dollars. Gucci flip flops don't even cost two hundred twenty dollars. Well, how many times did Gucci shoot a basketball on the court? Because you keep telling me that old boy ain't dribbled a ball at a basketball. I mean, in the NBA yet? Who gives a fuck? Like, how many shots did Gucci put up? You telling me that the the Gucci rubber that they make them slides with is more important than this? Rubber? Like, all this shit cheap. If you don't like it, you don't care for it. Don't buy the shit. That's all. Like, it's just that fucking plain and simple. I'm I'm all with. Shit, ownership. I'm all with you trying to make a dollar out of yourself, be self sustainable. Look at these Man, shoes. Man, them shoes look like bullshit, and I and I bet you they like twelve hundred dollars, five hundred eighty five dollars. These these shoes literally have duct tape on them. What are they? Um, these are Margellas as well. I'm not into high fashion. I like wearing Jordans and Timberlands, Nike boots. That's my shit. That's my lane. And Cole Hans to work. I mean, they got they they distract. Take these. Shoes, they put paint on them, they distress them, they cut them up, they put duct tape on them, and then they charge you nine hundred dollars for them. Like, come on, dog. And niggas will wear them all summer long. Yeah, I mean, all your favorite swipers work at, wearing these shoes. Work at Wendy's all summer and save up your hundred fifty dollar checks till you get a pair. Low key, I, I, I mean, I work in a uh, at a in a financial institution, and I was on the phone with a uh, the kid was born like in ninety nine or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he's seventeen, <laughs> and he made a transaction for roughly fifteen hundred dollars, and the, the 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 company put a hold on it. So he was trying to get his car to go through. I'm thinking like, why is this seventeen year old kid spending fifteen hundred dollars on a pair of shoes? And he, you can hear him and his girlfriend in the backyard. I mean, in the background talking or whatever because they trying to buy it online. I'm like, this kid is spending fifteen hundred dollars on a pair of shoes, but then you are gonna sit there and tell me that? Ain't no kid can afford four hundred ninety five dollars for a pair of gym shoes. Bullshit. They buying them. Bullshit. Hell yeah, they buying them every but motherfucking the, day. Not for the middle class. The middle class is who buying this shit. Yeah, cause they, <laughs> cause they want to look like something more. Niggas go broke trying to impress broke bitches for sure. every single fucking day. Trying to impress niggas. Broke niggas. Yeah. All right, man. Nigga, so I ain't gonna sit here in front like I ain't wear a pair of two hundred dollar phone posits to school. Shit. Like I ain't wear like I ain't have nigga Carolina Blue Jays when they came out. I didn't. I did, nigga. I would leave school, go to Northland, pick up some shoes, and come back. Uh, I think I, I, I didn't get my first. I didn't get my first pair of Jays until I don't know, like 11, 12th grade. Nah, I take that back. I definitely did have some like tenth grade. But after I started working, I actually can pay for my own shit because we couldn't afford the shit. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Like, just my mom was like, nigga. No, no, I was working. Like, shout out to Deborah Bradley and Ray Cash because they was not going for that bullshit. Yeah, so that's interesting. But, man, you kind of alluded to, man, um, a Shop Talk podcast picnic. So, look, I threw up this meme earlier this week talking about just how I wanted to have a lit ass barbecue, play late 90s and early 2000s music. And people were, you know, liking it. And somebody was like, you should make it happen. And I'm thinking, like, fuck, we sh- we will make it happen. A Shop Talk podcast. The one-year anniversary will be Wait, a- wait, wait, wait. Okay. Because that's Because like- I'm about to jump, I'm about to jump <laughs> off the mountain. I'm about to jump off the mountain. Because that's like a month from now. Okay. That's kind of close. <laughs> like, that's it what- is kind of close. So let's, let's target this shit, like, sometime in July, okay. where it's going to be hot as fuck for yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. Cause I got to take a week off. If, and I got to take a week off of vacation, so I may I might do it in July then. So the shop talk podcast picnic, possibly pool party. Now listen, possibly pool party. Now that's that's the that's the thing that you threw in there, <laughs> a pool party. Like, Cause I, I I've always wanted to throw like a. I don't know if you guys know, but Joe Button's uh, pool parties are legendary. Yeah. I used to watch him on Joe Button's TV back in the day. <laughs> They're just streaming like, nigga, I want to be here. Uh, but I would love to throw a fucking pool party, dog. Nigga, we shall. Now, that may, may not de- that may not be this year, right? Uh, uh, I'm I'm not aiming low, my nigga. Uh, I, I, I do want to do the barbecue thing this year. 
We could rent out a clubhouse somewhere and have access to a pool. I'm just I'm just saying the possibilities are out there. I think the pool party is an idea that will come to fruition <laughs> in the future. But this picnic, this barbecue shit, I mean, that's easy work. Yeah. Cool Breeze a DJ. Uh, we'll have some couple grills out. Shit, we throw that bitch on Bill Isle for real. Nah, I want wanted- Bill Isle lately. Yeah, I have. In the last couple of years, it's they, not the same Bell Isle. They've they've pussyfied Bell Isle. It's it's not the Bell Isle I knew and loved. Well, it, they took all the niggas away from Bell Isle. Okay, they, that's they, the Bell Isle that I knew and loved. Well, I used to love <laughs> driving up the strip, having a red cup full of something that I shouldn't have even bought from the store. Blown weed, listening to Master P or some fucking Rough Riders, having the fucking strip be packed the fuck out, and it just be women walking around everywhere, niggas riding on top of hoods. Like that's the Bell Isle that I miss, and the, and the police would not shut that down. Like you could be out on Bell Isle like but, four or five in the morning. Um, I used to know the director of Bell Isle who actually run ran Bell Isle, and niggas would go down that bitch and tear that shit the fuck up every fucking weekend. Put in new picnic tables, new everything in there. And Monday morning, they literally are pulled out of the ground, and everything is like really, really fucked up. And we fucked up Bell Isle so much, and so they they so they had to get rid of this. Shit. You niggas water Bell Isle down, man. They turn that wanna, shit into I a state. No, I no. I want to have a good time and not get shot. I missed the strip, dog. Well, I, I missed the strip. Get, I want to get shot, and I want to have a barbecue and and literally not have that bitch shot up. I Maybe we should that. have it at Roots. No, because you literally you <laughs> did. last time there was a barbecue uh, uh, at Rouge, uh, a woman got stabbed in the chest. Rouge <laughs> gives me like that old school Bell Isle. Even though that's my like. neighborhood park, and that's where we had all our shit at and played basketball and football and went to the pool at Rouge and uh, played bas- baseball and the whole nine yards. That's the that's my. I know we we still gonna try and we still where talking we, about where locations. We, where we have this 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 barbecue? At? I told you I got like like a I wanted to be a house party. A house party and a, people not with coming a pool. to a house that they don't know. But they they were like, if this is my home, people will come to my home. But you're not coming to my house. Uh, we're coming to a. The, we'll call it the shop talk house. You're coming to a house. I want to do. I want to do it right, and I don't know if everybody feel comfortable with strangers because like all our listeners, they don't know each other, right? So yeah, but in a in a in a centrally located place like a park or some shit, people feel comfortable coming to a park because they can dip when they want to. It's they not like boxed in. Like whatever, I think you know that may be. We gotta, we gonna find. We figure it out. If you all got suggestions for parks or p- locations, please send them to us because we gonna make this shit happen. Or the Shop Talk podcast picnic and one year anniversary is definitely gonna fucking happen. Now if we can get a pool party element into that shit. All I'm just gonna say if your body is not ready for two piece action, <laughs> don't bring your rusty looking, your body looking like a, a a sack of dirty ass clothes, your body looking like a sweet potato. You stay your ass at home or put on something full body because I don't want to see it. Don't bring your nasty ass body out to this <laughs> out to the shop talk fucking uh pool party and barbecue. Hey man, everybody's welcome to come to the party. They are just yeah. just wear regular clothes. <laughs> just wear regular clothes. We only we don't we don't want you walking around there if your body is misshapen. We would do a live bar, but we would do a live episode there too. And this time, I would not be drunk. Oh nigga, that's well. Well, speak for yourself. Cause uh, you got to You know, I will have a drink or two, but you gotta. I gotta be able to enjoy. It's gonna here. be BYOB. Absolutely, I miss mean, a barbecue. You know, and what I I'm plan saying? on in it's a BYOM. Let's get washed. Put that shit on the grill. I don't even eat meat. Pause. Um, so, we we not having no. I put I, some I, veggie. I'm not, uh, slide. I'm not trying to hear no <laughs> vegan shit on that fucking grill. I want put some vegan. Uh, I some want vegan fucking tacos. hot dogs, I hamburgers, mean, fucking grilled chicken, hey man, these potato be, salad. Dog, these fuck. Hey, who making the potato mac and salad? cheese? Who making the potato salad though? I want. I need somebody's mama to make some potato salad. Cause we not be. We don't, you can't be fucking around with the potato salad. Potato salad and macaroni. I can't. I can't be taking no I feel chances. Like Tara would bring good potato salad. I feel like she would make sure that potato salad is taken care of. She don't seem like she'll fuck around with the potato salad. Uh, Tara doesn't fuck around with. Well, nothing. she's not gonna cook it because <laughs> she will I'm, get it. She, I think she will. Be I'm not. To, I'm not going. I've I've tasted her cooking. She can cook. But yeah, I'm sure she can. But you know. 
She probably would. She would get it taken care of. I, I put like that. We're just going to use all the available resources that we have. So, I mean, if you want to donate some shit, you got to. Yo, I want to get a bounce house there, too. No. Keep your fucking kids at home. This nah, man. This, kids. this ain't for the kids. It's for us. Getting no. drunk and getting a bounce house. No, that's too much liability. <laughs> you are not suing Shop Talk Podcast LLC. We are a limited liability company. I don't want the fucking liability, okay? I just want to have a good time. Good music, good people, just like an extension of the birthday party. Like we just get a lot of good people out there. We drink, we eat, have a good time, socialize, listen to music, and and just turn up. And I want this bitch to be like four o'clock until um, until the police arrest us. I, I don't want to stand with. People. I, I don't like people that much. Uh, once it get dark, y'all can go home. Nah, man, that's when the party really get live. When it get dark. Oh, you can stay there because I'm dipping. I'm, <laughs> I'm out. They gonna have to put me out. Uh, I'm out. I'm not staying there all fucking night. I'm not staying nowhere all night. Uh, Nigga, we not gonna be there from four to midnight. Like we we the host. We show when we want to. No, I'm the responsible one. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so if the shit start at four, I'm gonna be there. Hey at man, two. my idea is sounding way more lit, and you are <laughs> <laughs> you are pouring water on this shit, bro. I'm you saying, are pouring water on this shit. The details. Actually, make it a successful event. The idea great, but it takes details and work. To make All it I'm successful. saying is that the Shop Talk podcast picnic it's gonna is good. coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's, it's in the infancy stages, but swear only it's coming. Ni- only '90s and 2000 music. Hell yeah! No future. Well, guess the, what year? You know, he's like 2010 ish. I don't know, yeah. man. We can't oh. play commas. Hey man, mask off. 90, nigga, this was your idea. 90s and 2000s, okay. It was just a meme, but it's, it's going to be good music. No Lil Yachty. No. Sorry. Can't do it. No, uh. Nigga, 90s and 2000s. These niggas wasn't born yet. Yeah. So. Have a good time. BYOB. Uh, throw some shit on the grill. Everybody come on, have a good time. And, um, maybe we can get some, um, uh, something got to be there. I don't know whether it's like, I mean, we we somebody, somebody you know how people would do art like they'll do do a painting of yourself or yeah. little characters or some shit. We gotta get nah, somebody out there. Dog. Nothing like that, man. Maybe we can get Tell a performer me. or two. I don't. Nobody want to hear no no rapper they never heard of spitting. Like nobody want to hear that shit. We've had rappers people have heard of on the show already. I mean, we can we can call in a. We got We can call in a few favors. They not doing free shows. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> now, if they want to do a free show, absolutely, because I'm not paying. <laughs> just do one song. <laughs> just do one song, real uh, good. But uh, yeah, man, that's what we we put something together. So we'll fuck with it. It's coming real soon. All right, man. Go ahead, and give out your shit, dog. Yo, it ain't ain't shit changed. Dame gone wild. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Dame gone wild at gmail dot com. Unless you want to, if you want to send something straight to me. And uh, yo, my life is is wild as fuck, and I appreciate everybody for taking taking in a part of it. I feel like when I share short story time with Dame, like you all are a part of my life at that point. Absolutely, she ain't got no teeth. Damn, she missing four teeth. Um, and Jay Johnson three one three on Instagram, Twitter. Um, follow the Shop Talk podcast uh, Instagram page. We getting those numbers up. I want y'all to follow that one more than my personal page because. Uh, I want to make that bitch private again someday. <laughs> <laughs> You're a public figure now. It can't be private, dog. Uh, but Shop Talk Podcast is popping. Yeah. Um, Shop Talk Podcast at gmail.com for all inquiries about studio time and all the dope shit that we got coming up. And we just appreciate y'all. And I'm not saying we the Rockefeller Podcast, but we are J and Day. Hell yeah. Peace.